Hey guys, Sarkat here, and I'm really tired, so you get to enjoy me in a dressing gown, and I'm going to show off the build I'm currently playing on a Monster Life, Monster Attack Speed, Monster AoE Hydra in a league which has stacked haste, so this is going to be like really messy. But I just kind of want to show off what I'm playing, and I'll start off by like showing it in action. So Corsica has been substantially buffed over the last several patches, uh, the main ones being the improvements which came in 3.4 when they actually buffed the gem itself and they introduced Toxic Rain. But 3.5 has actually introduced a whole bunch of quality of life. Uh, a lot of people were really worried that with the nerfs to Quill Rain that this style of build would be pretty dead. But you can make some really nice bows for these kind of builds, which I'll show off later. And the new, like, non-ailment uh, over time uh, modifier is really dirty. So you can actually get over a million um, shaper damage with, like, realistic setups. Um and like six seven hundred k with like good invest why are you pissing off dude uh with like half decent investment setups uh the setup i'm running right now i believe is probably about three maybe four hundred k um so you could get like double the damage you're seeing right now and the damage you're seeing right now isn't like amazing but it's good enough to clear all the content um, the life is pretty low currently because we're missing seven points of life on the skill tree and I'm using a Devoto's Devotion and fairly low life gear. My quiver only has 55 life on it and you can get more life in other slots. Um, but we actually have a ridiculous amount of a regen which is something I'll show off later when we're going over like the stats of the build. Dodge cap when we have Vol Grace up which lasts for a pretty long time. And really high evasion. And you can actually evasion cap this build. Um, and when you combine all of that together, um, it's actually a deceptively tanky character. Uh, my slash deaths, I believe, is 11. And I'm level 92 and a half. And of those 11, I think two of those have been in maps. And most of those were just uh, random silly things while leveling. Not really paying attention. And because my league has minus resists on it, and I leveled this character with like negative fire res and stuff the whole way. I'll get the rest of the loot later, whatever. Uh, most of the deaths came from that. Um, but otherwise, it's fairly respectable. Another really big uh, quality of life at slash DPS increase that came this uh, patch was the multiple totem support gem. The multiple totem support gem is crazy, crazy good. Um, basically, what it does is it means that when we go to drop our wither totems, instead drop multiple wither totems there's also a pretty silly uh bug slash exploit thing you can do with phase run which makes you completely invisible at the moment which you can use to cheese bosses but i'm not going to use that because it kind of defeats the purpose of the build showing off like how it works and stuff if i just cheese everything so as you can see like not the fastest but at the same time not the slowest and you can double my current damage and this is also a monster life map and you can see that even when I take random hits, because I'm not really paying attention because I'm doing a build discussion kind of stuff, I just regen up quite naturally, and it's all pretty chill. This has no helm enchants, and it could be a lot cleaner, but, you know, you get the idea, like, you can kind of kill stuff with it. So, let's kind of show you what we're currently messing with, and, like, how's it all kind of function. So... This is the bow in question that I was talking about earlier. Stuff like this is why I don't really care about the core range change. This isn't even like the best bow you can get. And this bow is actually very easy to get. So basically all this is, is alt, regal, and null. Until so you have just plus one socketed gems. Then mastercraft, multi-mod. Then plus two level of socketed support gems. And from here you can do a few different things. So if you want to make like a super generic bow... Um, like, this is super generic because you'll notice nothing on this is actually specific to Corsica Carry. You can use this bow for any Chaos over time build. So you could use this for Essence, Drain, Blight, Corsica Carry, Toxic Carry. You could even use this for, like, uh, like a stat stick for Death's Oath with a Blight in here. I know I mentioned that earlier. And bows like this are also seeing the rounds with Vortex and Cold Snap recently. So uh, if you, you know, set up bows like this, you can actually do really cool things. Just something to keep in mind. Uh, the ideal, like, perfect bow, the silly DPS numbers bow, you can get, like, a plus five levels of gem bow using stuff with fossils, but it's pretty hard slash unrealistic to craft. But anyway, our links currently are a level three in power, 
I'm currently leveling two more Empowers in Weapon Stop. When those hit level three, I'll start Varlig and going for four. Since I'm in a small private league, I can't just like buy the exact things I want. Um, with a level 20 course to go, hopefully you get a level 21. That'll be a very big DPS boost. Uh, 19, 20 Vicious Proj, 19, 20 Swift Affliction, 19, 20 Damage and Full Life, 19, 20 Void Manipulation. You can also use uh, Concentrated Effect, which has about 13% more damage, like in Path of Building, compared to Void Manipulation uh, for single target. You could also have two different bows that you weapon sort between. You could run like GMP in one bow, then Conk Effect in the other, so use one for map clear, one for single target. Uh, my quiver is awful. Um, it just has an additional arrow. Ideally, you try and get a shaper quiver with movement speed, additional arrow, and life. That would be like the GG. Um, Devoto's Devotion, just using it to run around faster. You could get a much better helmet, um, which had high life, and nearby enemies have reduced chaos. So that would also be a very big DPS increase, because currently I'm doing very little to lower enemy uh, chaos resistance, so that would be huge. Uh, for chest piece, I'm using Carcass Jack currently. It gives a bit of AoE, a little bit of damage. There are loads of chests you can use for this, and I've swapped between loads of different random chests. Carcass Jack, Kintsugi, Combs, uh, Duresso's Defiance, Law Weave, and you could just go for like a plus one curse, multi modded chest with a bunch of stuff on there. Loads of options. Chest piece, whatever you have at hand. You don't need a second sick link, which is also kind of nice about this build. Um, gloves, I'm just using Aspect of the Spider Gloves. Uh, the proper gloves would actually be Elder Gloves. You can get another 16% uh, non-ailment, and that is a more multiplier, that one there. Um, this can also be Divined Up. This is missing, like, a lot of damage there. Ideally, you're running a Elder pair of gloves and amulet, both with 16% of this uh, more multi. So I'm basically missing 32, that regaled up. Uh, seven. I'm missing 39% like more damage. Basically, a whole support gem from my gear currently. Um, on my belt, I have increased life recovery rate. This is really nice. It scales very well with Trickster. I just crafted this in a Lucky Essence, so that went pretty well. Um, also has some movement speed. Movement speed's pretty nice. These boots are dumpster trash. Um, definitely not best in slot. Ideally, I'd use Elder Boots. Um, Elder Boots can craft spell dodge on them. Only up to 10%, but you can, like, double the life that these have. And there are also really good mods like Endurance Charge on Kill that you can get. And you could ideally, all of your rare pieces where you can, with open prefixes, you want to use the Fossil Craft with um, Max Life, Percent Life, and also uh, Percent Life Regen. Stacking all the Regen, stack all the Max Life becomes very important later. And then my rings are just trash, has life, has resists, has life, has resists, ammy, life res, I need it because I need int, and that's like all the gear pieces. Uh, for jewels, my jewels are also terrible, and another source of missing more multiplier. 10% uh, damage life stats, because I needed the int. Uh, life res uh, damage, and a watcher's eye, which needs to be divined, but I don't have enough divines right now which gives you a little bit of evade to grace. So as you can see, really the bow is the only thing giving me damage from my gear. Like, and we're missing like loads and loads of scaling. So to show you the skill tree, what I'm using currently and like how I would change it or whatever, the base tree kind of looks anything like this. This is kind of like your base. There are loads of different ways that you can add on to here. There are loads of random source of additional damage that you can add. So this cluster is pretty efficient, like 2% per point. You can add uh, Frenzy Charges, which are like 2.5 per point. These are particularly powerful uh, when you combine this bow mod, increased damage per Frenzy Charge, with the Trickster, increased damage per Frenzy Charge. And we're currently using a Despair Curse on Hit uh, linked with Frenzy, so we can still maintain Frenzies and Curse Bosses. So you could go like full, full frenzy scaling. And that's really that tree wise. Kind of drop life slash damage as you see fit. I'm missing two, six life nodes there. That will push me up to about 6.2k. And then when you take off this helm and put on a real helm, you can get just sort of shy of like 6.57k. So like you're capping out at like level 95 with like actual good life gear. 
about 7-ish K without a Combs, you can also run a Combs in this build. And I'll kind of show you like the links because the links are really fluff. Like you could definitely drop everything for a Combs. So in my helm, I have a Castle Damage Taken, Summon Stone Golem, Dread Banner, Summon Holy Relic. The Holy Relic and Stone Golem just give me a bunch of regen. And I guess I'll talk about the regen now. So Tricks the Life Recovery, 70% increased recovery rate of life mana in any shield if you've killed recently. This is a more multiplier. So we have 70, 87, and 137. There are diminishing returns, so you need to keep that into account. We have 5.6% life regen based on the tree. Basically, we heal like a lot, a lot, a lot. Like we heal mucho helo. Um, also, cautious, sorry, catalyzed eternal life loss are really good when you stack this much regen. Um, this gives you like pretty absurd healing. If I was to go into my path of building real quick, with the proper setup, uh, the catalyzed eternal life loss kills you for 9.7k life over 2.2 seconds. You take that off, it heals you for 6.1k over 2.2 seconds, which is what it currently heals me for. So, this is healing for 6.1k over 2.2 seconds. Um, and stuff like Druidic Rite, which gives increased flask effect duration, gives like more healing to this. So this two-pointer is really strong because it adds about a second to all of my utility flasks. And adds about 1,000 healing to my life flask. And that's how I sustain on bosses. So I have very high just passive regen, which gets pumped up whenever I kill an ad. And there are generally adds on boss fights. And we have these really strong life pots, which, with Soul of Rislava, naturally regenerate on bosses and have 6% increased life recovery when I'm on low life. So if something hits you low, we heal back up. Because we have a bunch of dodge, we have a bunch of evasion, we don't get hit more than once. And you can see I even dropped a mortal call, because it's like, if I get hit once, I'm not going to get hit again. And when I get hit once, it summons my Stone Golem and my Summon Holy Relic. They'll die right away afterwards, so they'll give them, like, burst flat healing regen. And basically the whole character is like, if I get hit once, I'll, like, burst regen back to full, and I'm good to go. So that's kind of, like, the core idea. When it comes to, like, different ascendancy options, there are loads of different ascendancy options. So, Tricky Boy. Reasons to pick Tricky Boy. As I said, you get all the regen memes, which is kind of cool. You also get the um, recover life mana um, when you're just passively clearing stuff. That means you have zero mana concerns. Every other ascendancy option other than Trickster at some point will have to think about their mana slightly. Not if you're a Trickster. Uh, Prolonged Pain gives skill effect duration. Skill effect duration is very powerful, and I also the reason I take this is because of how Corsair works, you attack once and then you just dodge, like you just run around in circles, doesn't matter. Then you attack again when it runs out. The ideal helm enchant is increased course, course to carry skill effect duration. The more skill effect duration, the better. Also, all the damage I was talking about earlier, like the one mil damage rubbish, that is c without blight. No blight memes, no essence right memes, that is pure course to carry. Um, skill effect duration makes your Valve Grace better, makes your Wither better, it makes your Curse on Hit better. Basically, it just passively makes everything about the build better. And if you did decide to add a Blight in there because you really wanted to whore out the DPS, it makes that even better too. I don't use Mirage Archer because I don't like it. If you do like it, it also makes Mirage Archer better. So that's really good. And it gives them more damage. It also gives reduced damage taken from damage over time. There's a lot of random damage over time. If you do decide to boss, uh, there's a lot of damage over time degens in both Shaper and Elder. And another very strong thing about this build, because that's got so much like reduced damage taken over time, if you are doing shape, you are doing eld or whatever, and you get hit by a degen, this also has reduced damage taken over time. The second you walk out of that degen, your super um, regen kicks in, and then you just go... So you can kind of see like, the core idea there. Uh, Swift Killer gives easy frenzy and power charge generation. Not that difficult to generate either of them, but it also gives uh, increased damage per frenzy and power charge. Scales very well with the uh, nodes you can craft onto bows now, and it's just nice quality of life. If you didn't like it, you could take Ghost Stance for more movement speed, more dodge, uh, spell dodge, and more evasion rating. Uh, Weave the Arcane, some people drop it. I like it because, again, it means I have zero issues with mana. Um, it also gives me 6% damage uh, reduction situationally, which stacks really well with all of the other damage reduction. And one thing which is incredibly uh, good about this is it gives me the attacking cast speed steroid 
All the car speed that Trickster gains passively makes our Wither Totem a lot better. You'll also notice I use a Flame Dash and not a Blink Arrow. The reason why I use Flame Dash over Blink Arrow is actually very important. Uh, Flame Dash has a much smaller delay on it than Blink Arrow. And because I want to be constantly proccing Weave the Arcane, it just means that I'm always pocking it. I'm always having my attacks be buff. I'm always just going boom, 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 boom. And because it has three charges, you can chain it, which sounds really obvious. So if you're like on a boss or something sketchy and you need to just nope the hell out, you can go boom, boom, boom. Like, and with Blink Arrow, sometimes you blink, it's still on cooldown and you get screwed over. Just being able to chain that out, I just really like. If you prefer Blink Arrow, go for it. Personally, I prefer Flame Dash. Since they changed it, I just think Flame Dash is amazing. And it's linked only with uh, fast casting. Uh, the one bad thing about Weave the Arcane is we can't proc Arcane Surge very easily, but we don't really need it. So, as for like what you would do if you wouldn't want to do Trickster, the obvious choice is a Cultist. Completely different build. If I played an Occultist, I wouldn't go CI purely just because I'd want to try out the new node that I haven't tried out yet that looks really cool. And I would use Death's Oath as my chest piece. I'd do Death's Oath plus Caustic Arrow. Go full zoom zoom. Um, and I'd use Devouring Datum, Devouring Datum in my helm and I'd go EB Mom. The main choices you're seeing people doing are any one of the three Ranger Ascendies, Ascendancies. There is a very detailed, very good, like surprisingly good forum guide, which I'll just bring up now, um, which covers a Raider um, Corsic Arrow guide um, by a guy called Dank SL. This is the best forum guide I've ever read. I don't necessarily agree with everything in here in terms of like decision wise, but it's very well formatted and it's very thorough. And I'm going to leave a link to this just because he covers everything so well that even if you're like slightly lost, he'll sort you out. He goes in great depth on crafting guides. A friend of mine who's completely new to the game is also playing Core Scout. I didn't send him the video I'm recording right now because one, it hasn't been recorded yet. I sent him this just because it's so easy to follow. This is great. Definitely a great starting source. Even if you go completely different to this dude, this is like a good like beginner's manual. I'll leave a link to it. So he goes Raider. So why does he go Raider? So the reason he goes Raider is mostly for quality of life. However, I believe that tricks that out quality of life set. So he goes for Avatar of the Veil and Avatar of the Chase. Um, he gets a bunch of movement speed. He gains a bunch of attack speed. He gains some car speed from Avatar of the Chase. But most importantly, he gains immune to elemental ailments while phasing. Having the elemental, elemental, ailment, elemental immunity, some order of that words, um, is particularly powerful this league because of the new mods that you can craft on flasks. Uh, the two which really stand out for me for this build is firstly, 3% life regen while flask is active, scales very well with all of our leaf, uh, life recovery stuff, and 10% movement speed, 50% chance to avoid stuns. Very, very strong. Anything which makes you go faster is good. Um, otherwise, it's mostly just a little bit of dodge, a little bit of spell dodge. And then the big draw, in my opinion, is all of this uh, more evasion stuff. Getting that crazy like chance to evade. You can evade cap with this build if you gear it correctly. Um, currently, I'm on 77% evade chance. But you need to factor in stuff like Dread Banner. Um, Dread Banner reduces enemy accuracy. You need to think about slows, you need to think about like how far you are anyway, and you can evade cap this, so the fact you can evade the other one, they can both evade cap, the other one does it easier there. Um, otherwise the main big draw is you have onslaught when you've hit an enemy, uh, meaning you have onslaught for bossing without having to use a flask, I'm currently using a flask, I don't have a good way to generate onslaught on bosses. There is a mod you can craft on boots, which is another reason why I want to drop my Xeri's step, um, which is you have Onslaught during um, uh, Val skill lockout. And with that and a Onslaught on kill jewel, I can drop this flask. And then I will have 100% uptime on bosses and 100% uptime during maps. So that's going to be pretty good. Uh, when it comes to flask briefly, you don't need the Dying Sun. As I said, I'd probably recommend just crafting two bows, one with GMP. I'm just using it because I haven't crafted the second bow yet. So this I would drop and this I would drop. 
Um, I like Sid Mike flasks. They have very good uptime. I like blind. Some people don't like the fact you have to be in melee to blind. But generally, if you're on a boss, I would just drop that or run around in circles. And you just like, you drop the blind on the boss and you just run, right? Um, Jade Flask, Court Flask, Basalt Flask, all very, very strong. Uh, when it comes to reservations, you have to run Grace. Grace is really strong. I like it. If you weren't running Grace, I'd go Triple Purity. Dread Banner, one Aspect. I'm currently using Aspect of the Spider. I also really like Aspect of the Crab. Aspect of the Crab gives up to 20% physical damage reduction. The one weakness of these kind of builds is physical damage reduction. Aspect of the Crab also scales very well with Kintsugi, which is what the guide guy uses and what I used for a very long time. Very strong defensive chest, and the two of them scale very well together. Um, to get back on topic there, so comparing to the other Ascendancy options, you can tell I'm tired, I'm very all over the place. A lot of people then go Pathfinder. So Pathfinder gets um, some damage and it gains 50% AoE. That's pretty good. Uh, this final 2-pointer is pretty trash though. So if you went Pathfinder, you'd go Nature's Reprisal, Nature's Adrenaline, and Master Alchemist. You would also gain the Element Immunity. You'd also gain a little bit of damage reduction and Flask Sustain, which would be very nice for bossing. Uh, you gain some movement speed and you gain some Chaos Damage and some AoE. Very strong. I personally prefer Pathfinder to Raider for those reasons, just because it's slightly better to boss on and it does get a little bit of AoE, but I don't really like Pathfinder that much. I played a Pathfinder um, Toxic Rain character last league and I just felt really squishy. Trickster has like all of this really nice sustain and like that good stuff. I still pick Trickster. Um, I could also see Deadeye being a really solid option. So Deadeye gets the most movement speed because of how Tailwind uh, works. The more movement speed you stack, the stronger um, Deadeye becomes. If you want to go pure zoom zoom, Deadeye will just outscale everything else eventually. Um, it gains a bunch of like passive projectile damage. Projectile damage does scale um, your course to carry damage. Um, you get the 50% AoE that Pathfinder gets, but it also gets fire one additional arrow. And then from this point, you can choose to either get the increased blink arrow cooldown recovery speed a bunch more projectile damage, or you could go for the Pierce. Um, both of these are very strong. Basically, Deadeye is actually really good for Corsa Carrot, and I'm surprised more people don't play this when so many people play these two. Um, so with my like realistic gear setup using the bow that I'm currently using, you can see I'm at 738k um, shaper damage. That's with level 4 and power at level 21. Course to carry, let's say that you can't get the level 4 on power, but you can get the level one, uh, 21 course to carry, that's 650k. Let's say that you can't get that, that takes you down to 570k. And let's say that, I mean, maintaining max stacks on Wither is really easy with multi time support now, but let's say you, you only have one Wither stack because you've never pressed it during boss fights, you're still at 350k, uh, which is more than what you could ever get before this league realistically on bosses. Um, which is pretty, pretty sexy. Uh, that's not with power charges, because you won't have power charges on bosses realistically. But you will have uh, frenzy charges. If you wanted to go like full uh, DPS whore with my current setup, you would turn that on. Um, you would put your wither back up to full. You would have your core scary would be 21. You would have the level 4 in power. Um, you are running Conk Effect with your bossing, and you wouldn't use this bow, you would use the Insane uh, plus 5 bow. And you'd put your amulet back on. Uh, I'm using a Blood Grip with 32% non-ailment damage crafted on it, because that's what I'm missing from gloves and ami currently. Um, and everything else is like nothing on ring, nothing on ring, nothing on belt. Offensive wise. And then just uh, one stat thing. Looking at like 1.1, and I'm sure I could put something else in here, which is completely unrealistic. Basically, my point being is you can actually get like a decent amount of damage with Corsair now, hence why I'm playing it. And finally, uh, Taki, what happened to the other build you were playing this league? Uh, I think this build is actually my favorite build that I've played all league, because it plays exactly the same as all the other builds, but better. Um, so Vortex was my league starter, I played that to 92, um, then I re-rolled onto an Ignite Trickster, which I played until 92, then I re-rolled, 
I'm currently level 92 on this character. I've played a few characters in between, but I'm not going to reroll this one. Um, the big complaint I had with Vortex, Vortex felt amazing. It's really strong skill. Very few things wrong with it. The cooldown can feel a little bit iffy. I wasn't like crazy fond of the cooldown. Uh, my Ignite brand and then Fireball character, it felt a lot better than the Vortex character, but it had like half of the damage. This has damage which is comparable to the Vortex character, but has the quality of life and the feels Goodman playstyle of the Ignite character. And you can do like really cool gear crafting on it, uh, which just makes it really fun. And you've got loads of goals like you want to craft the bow, you want to craft the perfect quiver, you want to craft the perfect gloves, you want to craft the perfect ammy, you want to craft the perfect boots, craft the perfect helm. I really like builds like that where it's like every little craft, every little thing just ekes out a bit more damage and a bit more feels good. Man. So I'm really enjoying this. This is by no means a build guide though. This isn't a build guide. There will be flaws. I'm sure there's something wrong with my setup which can be optimized. This is not that. So yeah, don't hold don't hold me accountable for anything I say or do. I'm Taki. I'm going to go to bed now. Have a good day. Bye-bye.